still early in the morning and you can see the, the word bar behind me. Well, <laughs> it's not the bar, this is the networking bar actually. Uh, behind this wall, we, we got Sapura and we got Dam. Dam has the infrastructure and now Sapura has the VHF Tetra radio. So I'm going to talk about that topic right now. Um, and Stuart Will is able to tell me all about the infrastructure. And let's see who I can speak to at Sapura about the radio. At Dam, they're taking things differently. Uh, instead of waiting for rain and fog outside, uh, they're actually creating the rain to test their solutions. Well, they already tested their solutions, of course, but this is to show, you know, how durable and how, you know, IP60, how many? 65, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 65, these devices are being built. I think that's actually, uh, it has a big wow factor, and one of the wow factors of the show. Stuart Will from Dam. Stuart, PHF, Tetra. Uh, you guys launched that two years ago. Yes, uh, ma'am. How's it going? Okay, well, uh, we uh, introduced VHF because there is a need for certain parts of the world to use VHF because they have uh, more rural uh, landscapes. Uh, Typically, temperature is used in VHF because it's uh, more used in urban uh, areas. UHF allows you better penetration into buildings. But for other people, they have wider areas. In other parts of the world, typically outside of Europe, uh, places like Latin America, Australia, Australia yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, parts of Africa. Surprisingly, parts of Europe, maybe Central Europe as well, all could be users of VHF Tetra. We're gluing the things together right now then, right? Infrastructure radios. Absolutely, yes. What we have now is a cost-optimized solution because you've got a base station which is optimized for very harsh environments, particularly good uh, application for wide areas, places where you just don't uh, have that uh, same requirement that you do in inner towns. You may not have access to electricity, you could run our base stations on solar cells even. So you, not only have you got the extended coverage of VHF now, meaning you don't need as many base stations, so the capex is lower, you've also got the opex advantage as well. And of course you've got a choice of radios now. So it's an inexpensive solution? It is, in effect. Tetra radios compared to P25 are lower in cost, infrastructure is, is less, hey, yeah. it's a win-win situation. And typically users of uh, DMR now do not have to be compromised by that sole choice if they were thinking that way as well. Okay, let me talk to the guys of Sapura because they know all about radios, right? Yes, they sure do. Thanks a lot, much appreciated. Thanks very much. So let's go to Sapura right now, they know all about radios. This is Ben Yelta, and, and I don't know exactly who to talk about that new radio at Sapura, but Ben will guide me a little bit in that, right? Absolutely, I'd like so, to... It... Yes. What? Yeah, well... <laughs> well, this is Ben Yelta, and Belton... <laughs> Belton... <laughs> This is Ben Yelter and Ben is able to, to touch me to somebody within Sapura that can talk to me about that VHF radio. VHF development is big for you guys. Absolutely. Right it's a really, really exciting product launch for us. Mm. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Phil Woodley, who's a product manager for VHF radios. I can tell you all about them. I spoke to Phil before, right? <laughs> This is, I need to change that a little bit. Phil Woodley. Hello. Phil, um, VHF. Uh, yes. I just went to Dam. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, that solution works out very fine, specifically in mining. Yes. Now, the glue is here, right? Yeah. The glue yeah. is with the radio, yeah, it's the glue is with the devices. Something for the users to use. And yes. the devices are over here. So I'll Let's show go you. to the devices. That is the latest and greatest of Sapura on VHF Tetra. Yep, so that's the hand portable. Obviously you need a complete portfolio, so we've done the mobile as well. Which is that there. That's this one over here? Yep. So the SC20, and it is exactly the same as our entire other range of SC20s, just rebanded. So and it's the same with the mobile. 
exactly the same as our other mobiles, just rebanded. Uh, and look at the user interface, it is exactly the same as all of the other Supura devices. Exactly the same. Um, so that means that that works out fine, right, in the first place. But then, end users, development. Uh, so the, you know, the user interface was developed with end users in, in mind, right? Because I can remember Supura from the past. Yeah. They were doing a very good job. I can remember in the Netherlands 20 years ago, going to end users, talk with the end users, and discuss, you know, how should the radio look like? What should the user interface be? Yeah. And the only thing you change right now is only the bands, right? Exactly. So everything we do is driven by user interaction. We talk to users a lot. And that's what we've done VHF now, because the users have gone, we need it. So we look at the market and go, right, now's the time to do it. And things like the user interface, you're correct. Some of our customers will have UHF and VHF. What you don't want them to do is have to relearn how to use a radio. So it's exactly the same as their, all of our other radios. They can pick it up and just use it. Okay, so where are you going to sell this device? Or, or actually the combination, right? Now, yeah. Infrastructure and radio. Yeah, so obviously mining uh, was one of the primary drivers for doing this, and we've already got customers lining up. But surprisingly, mm. we've had loads of interest. Africa, wide area, you need wide area coverage. VHF is better at that but we've got European customers that are going, I have a specific requirement in a very, very north of Sweden, for example, where they've got big wide open areas, and this suits them as well. Um, some of the Eastern Europe cu uh, customers are now going, I have opportunities for this. So actually, anywhere where you've got wide open areas, this works. Only wide open areas? No, absolutely actually not. Actually not, right? No, absolutely not. Um, we have customers that don't actually have access to spectrum in the UHF or the 800 meg but they have VHF Spectrum. Now they can use all the benefits of Tetra. So actually it fills a big gap. Uh, we think it does fill a big gap. We think it's incremental business for us and Darm in this instance, but uh, so, yeah, so it's Phil, a great business. So Phil, you know, 20 years down the line, Tetra yeah. is there, 20 years down the line, VHF is appearing, is popping up. Why not earlier actually? Because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up to me. What happened? Why didn't it come earlier? With well, Ford? we've been looking at this for a few years, but it is always about the right market pull at the right time. Okay. Um, and, you know, most manufacturers will say that. It's when is the right time to do something? And it just happens to be now is the right time to do this. Okay. And it's created quite a stir, which is great for us. So there was a press release yes. about the SU. Yes. Uh, what did you guys change on the device? Right, so we're developing it now. We've now added... That's the one, right? That's the one, yeah. Yep. yeah. We've added a Tetra module in there, which is capable for doing currently DMO, but it's also capable to do TMO. So for people who want to move on to broadband, we have a solution that we can take them forward. So a lot of countries are not going direct straight away. We're looking at data first, moving on to full MCX capabilities. We've got a solution that we can work with. And that's where Sapura is tweaking everything, yes. like, you know, how can we easy support our customers yes. with, with the little changes little within changes. the devices, yes. Yes. frequencies, yes. VHF, and all those kind of things, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's how you serve your customers in the best it possible is. way. It is. As you can see, we've got a small jigsaw, and this is the jig part of the puzzle. If we're moving forward, and in here we've got the Tetra module, which has all the features for Tetra as it is today. So we've got TMO, and we've also got DMO on it. So the capability of the platform going forward is quite strong. So what is exactly the module? Is it this one you can just see in the picture? That's this one over here. It's part of it. So it's, it's a part circuit of it. board. It's a circuit board. And Steve is running the show for Sephora for how many years now? Five years. Five years, right? So I've got a, I've got a question about, you know, we can talk about products, which I already did. 
Yeah. But let's talk about the company itself. Because, um, you know, there's lots of stuff going on, specifically in the private sector, about developments on technologies. And I can see that the gap between um, the private sector and critical communications for public safety is getting bigger and bigger. And what I mean with that is that, you know, developments are there, but the take on of new solutions for public safety, as these organizations are taking on these solutions slower than everybody else, the gap is getting bigger. How can you make sure that the gap is you know, leveled out a little bit? Uh, Sapira themselves are very active within the standardization process within 3GPP. So from a standardization perspective, we're making sure our mission critical users get the functionality they need within the future levels of the standard in the release and therefore within our products. Sapira ourselves, we in the last two years have increased our R&D by 48%. So we're investing heavily in engineers and of our R&D, 50% now is not Tetra. It's broadband. And I'm using the word broadband, not just LTE, because it covers many different aspects. As you say, there's so many different solutions out there, and we as a company need to keep up with those solutions and deliver those to our customers. So we're investing heavily within that. So again, working close with the end user is, is key here? It's critical. One thing we've seen, especially in the early days of Mission Critical LTE, is that some suppliers are forcing their solution from the cellular world onto those users. But you need to start with the user. If you do not have user acceptance, and you do not deliver operational benefits to that user, they won't buy your solution, whatever technology. And that knowledge is key with a company like Sapura, right? But, but all PMR manufacturers are having that same specific knowledge about you know, those yeah. users. And that's the benefits of still working with companies like yours, right? Yeah, I mean, that's our niche, but it's also our strength. We have 30 years understanding of dealing with these end users and understanding how they operate, how we can create efficiencies for them, but also looking further forward, how we can use all the benefits of Mission Crystal LTE to deliver even more operational efficiencies. So our IPR is not just our Tetra part or our knowledge of LTE or our other knowledge on accessories. Our main IPR is our know-how of our customers. Thank you, Steve Barber. Thank you.